what's up you guys and welcome to my youtube channel i hope you guys enjoyed that unboxing um i literally just got these in the mail so i haven't smelled them or anything like that so i thought it would be really fun to do a first impressions with you guys I really wanted to buy these in store just so I can kind of smell them for myself instead of blind buying them, but unfortunately none of the stores near me carried them. I think the closest store was like two hours away and that was just a bit much for me. So I ended up ordering them when Bath & Body Works was having their $5.95 sale this past weekend. When I saw that this collection came out, I was super, super excited um, just because I'm not really someone who likes to spend a ton of money on perfumes. Um, for some reason, I tend to gravitate towards like celebrity perfumes, I think just because they're so inexpensive. Um, so if I can get a similar fragrance to a $200 perfume, um, I'm so about that. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in and I'll give you my first impressions on each one. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is O oh Cherry, and this is supposed to be duping Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. And the fragrance notes for this is Black Cherry, Sheer Magnolia, and Tonka Bean. Okay, so this one is really nice. Um, I've actually never smelled Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, but this definitely smells like an elevated cherry fragrance. Okay, so with this one, it's like a sweet cherry, but the sheer magnolia is making it very perfumey. Um, and I think that this would go really good with a lot of the um, cherry fragrances that I already have in my collection. Um, Bombshell Intense is one of the ones that I'm already thinking of pairing this with. Um, but yeah, so far, I think this is really, really nice. Another thing I want to say about this is that it's pretty strong. It's obviously a body mist, so it's not going to project the way a perfume would, but for a body mist, it's pretty impressive. Okay, so up next we have Pink Obsessed, and this is actually duping Valentino's Donna Born in Roma, and this one I actually have smelled before. I don't own it, but I've smelled it, and I really, really like it. And actually, I just got to smell the two uh, Valentino born in roma flankers in the mail it's like a green one um i got a little sample of it when i got an ulta flyer and i really really liked it so hopefully this smells somewhat like it just because i already know that i enjoy that fragrance um and the notes on this is blushing jasmine cashmere praline and vanilla bourbon Okay, so I really, really like this one. I think it is very similar, and this to me smells like a high-end perfume. Um, I personally, I'm not going to invest in Valentino Don Donna Born in Roma anytime soon, so to me, this is amazing that for $6, I can get something extremely similar. It's very, very nice, um, and it's a little bit floral too. Yeah, I definitely get the jasmine, but... The praline sweetens it up. Yeah, I highly, highly recommend Pink, Pink Obsessed. So the next one we're going to talk about is Covered in Roses, and this one's duping Delina. And the Delina perfume, I've never smelled, but I've always had my eye on it. Um, the bottle is just so gorgeous, so uh, girly and attractive, and I've seen so many YouTubers talk about it, but I've actually never got a chance to smell it, so I'm really excited to try this one out. And the fragrance notes for this are Ruby Berries, Sugared Rosebuds, and Blush Amber. Okay, so as of now, I'm getting kind of like a lot of alcohol. I'm not really able to smell this too well. Like, I'm kind of just getting a ton of alcohol and a ton of rose. I'm not getting much of anything else. Okay, so as it's drying down, I'm definitely starting to get more of like that amber note and um this is very very strong actually this is like the projection of perfume this one's very impressive but i personally am not like a rose lover so i think this is something i'm gonna have to wear and get to know a little bit better and hopefully i'll end up liking it as of right now it's just okay um 
but like I said I'm not super into roses so I think that's just kind of like something that I need to learn to like a little bit more um same with like patchouli I feel like when I first started wearing patchouli I wasn't super into it and as I've gotten older I've learned to really like it so hopefully that'll be the case with me when it comes to roses but yeah this one is very strong and if you already know that you like that perfume I would definitely get this it is it projects very well Okay, so up next, I'm going to talk about Petal Parade, and this one is supposed to be duping Prada Paradox. I've never smelled that one before, um, but the notes on this are Neroli Petals, Orange Flower, and White Woods. Okay, so right away, this is very citrusy and very floral. Um, let me read the notes again. Yeah, I'm definitely getting like a citrusy sort of floral note in this. Um, and like I said, I've never tried um, Prada Paradox before. But this definitely smells expensive. It's very floral, very perfumey, and I like it. This is very bright and kind of like a classy, elegant daytime fragrance in my opinion. So this next one I'm super excited to try. Um, this is supposed to be duping Kaoli Vanilla 28 and this is Viva Vanilla and I've actually never smelled Kaoli Vanilla 28 but I'm a gourmand girl. I like my vanillas. I like my warm fragrances. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to try this one and the notes for this are Rich Plum, Glowing Amber, and Addictive Vanilla. Okay, this is really nice, and already I can tell I'm going to love it, um, but it actually smells very familiar to something. If I can think of what it is, I'll write it on the screen right now, but it is definitely like a perfumey vanilla. Okay, so this really reminds me of something Bath & Body Works has already come out with, and it was actually in that like prismatic collection. They had it out on semi-annual sale this past winter, and it was like with that collection that had that sapphire one and this reminds me of that purple one i can't really think of the name of it right now i want to say it's called prismatic stars um i'll put it right up here for you if i can find it but it really really reminds me of that one and i actually really love that one um i already own it and they're super um similar i feel like this one's going to be a really versatile one and something that will pair really good with a lot of like gourmand fragrances in my collection if you have sabrina carpenter sweet tooth i think that one would be really nice i can also see this pairing really well with um fresh cream warm cashmere which is what i have here i don't have sabrina carpenter sweet tooth but these two are very similar and i can see these two pairing really beautifully Okay, so I found my Prismatic Stars Body Mist, and let's just compare the fragrance notes. Um, so this one is Raspberry Stardust, Mystic Plum, and Cosmic Cashmere. So the notes are a little different. They're kind of similar, but um, on the first impressions, this reminded me so much of Prismatic Stars. So I'm going to like do a side-by-side -side test. Okay, so now that I've got a side-by-side, -side, they're definitely different. Um, the Prismatic Stars is a lot more like berries, like that's what I get right off the bat. And now that Viva Vanilla has dried down a little bit, it's definitely more warm, more vanilla. It's almost like a, ca a cashmere sandalwood type uh, scent. Prismatic Stars has cashmere in it, so I think that's why my nose is kind of picking up on a similarity, but now that I'm smelling them side by side, they're definitely different, and I think I do actually prefer Viva Vanilla. Okay, so up next I have If You Musk, and a lot of people are saying that this is um, a repackage of Kaleidoscope. I've never had Kaleidoscope, so I really can't compare the two, and as far as a high-end fragrance, this is supposed to be duping Glossier U. And the fragrance notes for If You Musk are Iris, Pink Pepper, and Airy Musk. Okay, so I'm going to be completely honest. I don't really know how I feel about this one. 
I feel like with iris, uh, the way that I enjoy iris is if it's like sweetened up and this one is not sweet, it's just straight up musk. And I definitely get that pink pepper note. Um, this is something I'm going to have to wear for myself. I know with Kaleidoscope, it was supposed to be like one of those fragrances that is different on everybody's skin. So maybe if I apply it to my skin, I'll feel a little differently about it. But as of right now, this is just really, really musky, like too musky for me. So up next is Getaway Soiree, and this is supposed to be duping Tom Ford's Sol Le Blanc. And the fragrance notes for this are Sunkissed Mandarin, Tuberose, and Solar Musk. Okay, so I really like this one. For some reason, this kind of like reminds me of my mom. Um, I don't know why. I think she tends to like more sunscreeny, elevated type perfumes. Like I know she has one from Estee Lauder. Can't think of the name of it right now. If I can um, find it, I'll let you know. But this one is very lovely. It's very floral, very sunscreeny. And it smells really, really expensive. Like, like I said, this kind of reminds me of something expensive that she would wear. I don't know why, but this kind of reminds me of something you'd wear on like a vacation. Maybe you're in Florida, in Miami, and you're sipping on mimosas. Uh, it's just like a really pretty brunchy fragrance. Um, it's very like solar, very, um, very floral. I really, really like this one. I'm honestly surprised that I like this one as much as I do just because I'm not really into florals like that and when it comes to like sunscreeny scents a lot of the times I think they're just okay but there's something really special about this one and I'm gonna have to wear it and let you guys know what I think about it like as far as longevity goes and all that good stuff. So up next we have Floral Fantasy and this is supposed to be duping, uh, let me look at my notes here, YSL Montpellier. And with this one, uh, I watched It's Mindy here on YouTube, and she said that this reminded her of Victoria's Secret um, Tea's Candy Noir, and that one is one of my all-time favorite Victoria's Secret scents. It's just so dark and patchouli, like, even though there's no patchouli in that one, it just is very dark and smells like patchouli, and I'm really excited to try this one, and I hope that it's similar to uh, Victoria's Secret. I forgot to mention that the fragrance notes for this is Peach Asmanthus, Jasmine, and Warm Patchouli. Okay, so with this one, the patchouli is a little bit different than I was expecting. Like, whenever I enjoy patchouli, it tends to be with, like, berries or maybe something very sweet, and this is not that. Yeah, this one's just okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be keeping this one. We'll see. Um, I have to wear it more and like try it out for myself. But I can see why she said this kind of reminded her of Victoria's Secret Candy Noir just because it has like that, that darkness to it, like something you'd wear at night or in the winter. But it's kind of missing that sweetness for me. It's just a little bit too like floral. One thing I will say is that um, I have smelled... YSL Mon Paris, um, just like when I'm in the store shopping, and I've never really liked that one. It's never been one that I needed to buy or feel the need that I like had to have it, so maybe that's why I'm not liking it as much as I thought I would. As of right now, it's just okay, and um, if you like YSL Mon Paris, I would give this a chance. I just personally don't really like that fragrance too much. Next, I have On the Horizon, and this is supposed to be duping Armani Aqua di Gioa, and the fragrance notes for this are Watery Bergamot, Blue Lotus, and Driftwood Moss. So with me, aquatic fragrances can kind of go either way. There's a few aquatic fragrances in my collection that I really, really love, and others that I really don't care for. Um, it kind of just depends on the fragrance itself, so I'm like 50-50 when it comes to aquatic notes. Okay, so I really like this one. I was kind of nervous that I wouldn't just because Aqua de Gioa isn't my favorite. It's, it's just okay, but this one is very lovely. 
If anything, I like this one a little bit more, but I can really see the similarities. Yeah, this one is very beautiful, and I really, really like it. I'm really glad that um, this one ended up working working out for me, just because with aquatic ones, it's like 50-50 typ typically. So I was actually gifted Aqua de Gioa a long time ago, way before I was even into fragrances by um, my grandma. She just had a bottle of it and didn't want it anymore and gave it to me. And at the time, I just felt like it was a little bit too masculine for me. And this one is also... Like, I can see that it's unisex, but I really like it. I would say it leans a little bit more feminine, but I can see this being, like, borderline unisex. It's very clean, very oceany, and almost like, like laundry. Um, I really like this one. Okay, so up next I have Lost in Santal, and this is supposed to be duping Le Labo Santal 33. And the reason I was so excited for this one, this is actually the reason I even wanted to place this order was because I've heard Nicole Guerrero talk about the real Le Labo and Lisa Lisa D1 here on YouTube talk about Le Labo and how they get like compliments when they wear that fragrance so if this is duping that I am very curious and uh yeah I feel like I trust their opinion so I'm super excited to try out this one And the fragrance notes I forgot to mention are warm cardamom, satin sandalwood, and cedarwood. Okay, so this one is nice, but it's a lot more earthy than I was expecting. Yeah, it's definitely like very earthy, um, very natural smelling. Yeah, it's a lot different than I was expecting. For some reason, I was almost getting like, thinking it was going to be like a cologne, but it's not. Okay, so right now I'm 50-50 on this one. Um, I think the cardamom in this is kind of throwing me off a little bit. It's not bad, um, it's just a lot different than I expected. I just personally don't know if I would like to smell like this, but it's not a bad scent. I would say it's like not masculine, but more probably like unisex. It's not feminine, it's not masculine, it's kind of like right in the middle. It's just very, very earthy. I think this would probably be, probably be more of a scent that you would like mix with other scents, not necessarily wear by itself. So if you guys own this and have any combinations, please let me know. But as of right now, um, don't know how I feel about it. I'm very 50-50 on it. Alright you guys, so that was my first impressions on these 10 fragrance dupe scents that Bath & Body Works just came out with. And again, these are just first impressions, so my opinion on all of these could change. Um, as I wear these a little bit more, I'll do like a more in-depth review on it and let you know how I feel about it. But as of right now, I would say my top three are, in no particular order, On the Horizon, Getaway Soiree, and Viva Vanilla. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in my next one.